Good afternoon and welcome to today's liftoff webinar. Thank you for joining us today. Again, welcome to today's liftoff webinar where we're talking about the Mentor Protege program building small business defense industrial base capacity through mentorship. My name is Christine Longroy, Senior Director of Ecosystem here at Lyft, and we appreciate everyone joining us today for this very important discussion where we will learn about the DOD's Mentor Protege Program. Today, our very own uh, Lyft colleague, Beth Kreiderman Moss, who's our Director of Contracts, and our MPP MII Program Manager will be presenting today. A little background on Beth, prior to Beth joining at Lyft. She spent 15 years as the program manager for the Macomb Regional Apex Accelerator, formerly known as PTEC. Um, so again, thank you for joining us. As a reminder, um, please, if you have questions during this uh, presentation to add your questions in the uh, questions tab and we will address those at the end of the presentation. Again, thank you for joining us today. Welcome to Liftoff Webinars, brought to you by Lyft, the National Advanced Material Manufacturing Innovation Institute, where we drive American manufacturing into the future through technology and talent development. Lyft is a public-private partnership where we convene and connect government, industry, and academia in the fields of advanced materials, manufacturing processes, systems engineering to enhance America's manufacturing competitiveness, national economy, and national security. Welcome everybody. I'm happy to share with you a new program that Lyft is undertaking on behalf of the Manufacturing Innovation Institutes across the United States. Uh, Christine shared a little bit with you about what the MIIs do and what we're about. Um, and I want to offer um, you some information on a new opportunity that's come to us, um, not just for small businesses, but also for large businesses that are working in the materials space or materials sciences space or working with any MII in the United States. So to um, introduce myself, I'm Beth Kreiderman Moss. I am the Director of Contracts with Lyft, and I'm also currently managing the MPP MII program. Um, MPP, Mentor Protege, Manufacturing Innovation Institute Program Manager, and this is about the collaborative initiative that we're engaged in currently. So here's the agenda of what we're gonna discuss. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what the operating environment is, the landscape, um, the what the MIIs do. Again, Christine's already provided that overview for you. A little bit about the MPP program, why it makes sense that the MIIs and the MPPs should be partnered together. Um, a little bit about what the eligibility requirements are to take advantage of this program. And then, um, what the opportunity description looks like when you go out onto um, sam.gov systems for awards management or what used to be called FedBizOps. Um, this opportunity has been posted out there. You can go find it. If you were to develop a proposal between a mentor and protege pairing, a little bit about what that content should look like, what some of the evaluation criteria are, and then some tips, key tips and uh, conclusion. So first off, um, Mentor Protege Program, a Manufacturing Innovation Institute Collaborative Initiative. Um, why did we um, think this was a good idea? Um, primarily, um, this was developed as a result of challenges that we have seen um, a significant decline in the defense industrial base as it applies to small business participation. Um, I've heard different, um, different uh, stats that characterize that, that we have lost as much as 40% of our small business participation. 
And so it's an imperative that we look for all, all ways possible to um, develop more um, engaged small businesses um, and have them look at the Department of Defense as an opportunity to develop their, their business um, as a potential revenue source. Um, we also have noticed that um, as a result of COVID really is a great example that really highlighted some of the supply chain challenges that we're facing um, and reliance on other nations for critical supplies that we need here in the United States. So uh, developing um, internal or domestic supply chains, um, increasing our production capability, um, reaching out to engage diversity, equity, and inc inclusion as it applies to federal contract opportunities. Um, and then again, um, as I started with, to increase small business participation throughout the defense industrial base. Um, the mentor protege program does that by uh, minimizing barriers to, to entrance um, and cultivating new and, and vital capabilities. So as Christine mentioned, um, Manufacturing Innovation Institutes were public-private partnerships. Um, we were developed to in, improve competitiveness in the U.S. manufacturing base um, and to increase uh, production of goods manufactured predom predominantly in the U.S. Um, and really significantly to um, facilitate an, uh, innovation through um, technology transition from um, industry into potential opportunities for the Department of Defense by adding capabilities to the warfighter to improve um, their manufacturing enterprises, um, to really increase the capability that we have to make it an unfair fight um, for the United States um, and accelerate and uh, develop advanced manufacturing workforce um, also to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange for manufacturing and best practices uh, that's done through our ecosystem. And then to leverage non-federal support and sources of support to establish a sustainable business model. So the MIIs don't rely just on uh, government, con government contracting or, or DOD, um, but also looking at uh, private sector partnerships to sustain our business model. So that's what the MIIs do. We have, um, you'll see here on the lower right-hand screen, um, there are nine DOD Manufacturing Innovation Institutes. And of course, LIFT is uh, located in Detroit, Corktown, Detroit. And each of those DOD MIIs have a different technology focus area. Uh, and ours, of course, is on materials, ma materials, um, innovation, materials, sciences, um, doing applied research on different molecular structures of metal alloys and how we could potentially um, decrease the carbon footprint, make them lighter, um, more efficient, and um, more conducive to hold up to extreme environments. The Mentor Protege program has been around for a couple decades now, um, and are, they're officially no longer a pilot program, the Mentor Protege program, but it was initially designed to um, help small businesses gain more capacity within the defense industrial base community through government contracting. Um, that's done through a mentor that will provide technical assistance to a small business protege. Um, they will provide guidance on internal business management systems, accounting systems, marketing, um, manufacturing processes, and this is where we come in. Um, strategic planning. They also provide um, financial assistance in the form of equity investments, loans, or bonding. Um, there is a potential there. Um, and by assisting small businesses, a mentor will help them navigate the federal contracting space um, in acquisition and, for, and federal procurement processes. They can also assist with strategic planning, helping a small business find uh, their market, and develop partnering opportunities. And um, just general and administrative assistance, um, things like human resources, sharing um, security, clearance support, and helping a business 
um, become potentially cleared as a facility. And um, they use that through, and I have that highlighted and bolded here, through expanding the use of authorized subcontractors. Authorized subcontractors are if a mentor company wants to mentor a protege company, they can outsource some of the um, processes that they want to share or uh, embark on that uh, or uh, impart on that small business as far as their knowledge and innovation. They can do that through the use of resources that already exist. For example, um, historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs, um, minority institutions, the APEX accelerators, formerly called PTACs, um, they have a lot of business resources available to small businesses who want to engage in the government contracting uh, world. Um, small business development centers, the women business centers, and now the manufacturing innovation institutes are now an authorized subcontractor. So if an MII, um, if there is a mentor company, they are interested in working with a small business, developing them as a protege. They could outsource uh, knowledge base education training uh, through the MII by providing manufacturing training, um, some type of assistance on manufacturing processes, on how to make that protege more competitive in the federal marketplace. So we looked at um, how do we combine these two these two great um, organizations or organizational miss missions um, to really kind of send an olive branch out to the ecosystems that are working with the MIIs to know number one that this program is available to them um, and and why does that make sense? Um, because there's such a significant uh, decrease in small business participation, this could provide a way to increase that uh, access that the Department of Defense may have to those small businesses that have those unique innovative capabilities. Um, it provides small businesses a way to um, break down existing barriers on doing business with the United States government. If you are a technology-based firm, small business, and you're doing applied research, um, you may not, you may know your craft very well, the science and technology behind that, um, but you maybe not have the um, capability to articulate that in the federal government contracting environment. Protege companies can maybe help you do that, provide you coaching and assistance to provide you accessibility to that. Um, MIIs can also leverage um, small businesses to become part of their ecosystem through outreach through these programs and um, also really expand and develop opportunities um, across the supply chain um, and then leveraging um, also your socioeconomic categories. If you're a hub zone company, an 8A firm, a um, uh, my own minority owned business, uh, any of these companies are uh, potentially um, potential companies that have an opportunity to further engage um, with the mentor protege program through the MIIs. So what, what do you need to know in order to be eligible um, to be a mentor? You need to be in good financial health and you cannot be debarred from doing business from, from the federal government. You need to be able to verify and prove that you can provide um, valuable knowledge to a protege firm um, because of the experience that you have working in that space, which means that you have to be able to prove that you have um, at least $25 million um, in contract awards with the federal government um, to in order to basically show that you have been able to navigate that space in a way that shows that you have competency um, to be able to provide um, coaching to a, a protege company. So you need to have contracts or subcontracts equal to 
or greater than $25 million in the previous fiscal year. Um, so there used to be a, a criteria which required the protege or the mentor company to be um, other than small. That is no longer the case. So even small businesses that have uh, $25 million in revenue through DOD contracts or subcontracts within the previous fiscal year, they also are now eligible to become mentor firms. This is new just within the last year. Um, if a prime contractor to the DOD has obtained an, an active subcontracting plan, um, or if they've graduated uh, as an 8A firm, um, they can uh, also participate in the as a mentor. If none of these quite apply, uh, but you think that you may be eligible as a mentor firm, um, you can seek a waiver of exception. For example, if you're a small business who does have $25 million in revenue or greater in DOD contracts in the previous fiscal year, but you don't have a small business subcontracting plan because you're a small business, you can seek a waiver for that and uh, become an eligible mentor program. For protégés, uh, protégés have to be, uh, number one, you have to be a small business to be a protégé. If you meet any of these categories under um, the small business programs, for, for example, small disadvantaged business, if you're an SDB, um, if you're a uh, woman-owned small business, Native American-owned small business, historically, um, or uh, uh, hub zone, which is historically underutilized business zone, if you're located in one of those geographical regions um, or fall within an area, or area that has uh, historically a lower socioeconomic um, rate of earnings, compared to the rest of the country and your hub zone eligible. All of these firms are eligible to participate as a protege. And with the MII space, this becomes very significant. That last bullet, um, if you are a company, a small business that provides um, critical uh, capabilities to enhancing the defense and supplier base to fulfill DOD needs, it is also an eligibility requirement. So if you may not meet your small business, you're not sure if you meet any of these set aside categories, but you do have a, a critical uh, capability or technology uh, that the DOD could benefit from, you could be eligible to participate as a protege. And in manufacturing, manufacturing and developing manufacturing across the United States, is critical currently to the Department of Defense. So this is what the opportunity looks like, the opportunity description if you were to go out to sam.gov, Systems for Award Management, or formerly FedBizOps back in the day, uh, you would uh, find the uh, FY23 Mentor Protege Program using this opportunity description. Uh, this is what the posting looks like. Once you find that posting and you are interested in developing a proposal, uh, there's first of all, lots of assistance available to you. I want to uh, impart to the audience that that is critical to um, getting good advice on developing that mentor protege proposal. Um, you need to develop a plan content, a plan, you look at that content, plan that content, uh, you have to be a solid member of the defense industrial base. Um, you have to be manufacturing focused. Uh, your capabilities are clearly defined. You need to describe what the impacts of being able to participate in the mentor protege can do for you to help level the playing field and, and get you as a viable member of the defense industrial base. Um, other critical elements that the, the proposal should contain, um, it's basically broke down into three sections, um, executive, technical, and cost volumes. So how do you plan to execute? How are you going to execute your agreement between the mentor and protege? Um, what are the technical capabilities that 
you look to enhance. And then obviously there is going to be, there's cost associated with, and we'll look at that um, as a step one, rough order of magnitude, ROM, cost proposal, um, and then in the step two proposal submission that will require a full-blown cost, cost proposal. At least 50% of that agreement has to be associated with engineering and technical assistance. And in the Mentor Protege pilot program, um, the uh, Mentor Protege agreement proposal must include or outline who and what DOD Manufacturing Innovation Institute you're currently working with or you intend to work with. Once that proposal is received, there are several criteria for evaluation that we'll be taking a look at. Um, we're going to look at what technical assistance that you've described in that mentor-protege pairing agreement. Um, what type of developmental assistance are you are you looking at? That is an evaluation or criteria for evaluation. Uh, what subcontract and prime contractor opportunities um, could make you more valuable as a potential supplier? Um, what types of opportunities will you be looking at where you, you feel that you could fit? Um, how this program would develop, develop a protege company um, under what types of opportunities? Um, the level of MII involvement. Also, um, the other authorized subcontractors, as mentioned, Apex Accelerators, SBDCs, HBCUs, um, the woman-owned uh, business um, opportunities, um, relevance to DOD programs, looking at what the DOD is currently looking at as critical areas that we need to move into. Are we aligned? Does the agreement provide um, an opportunity to align with those programs? Um, the corporate commitment, um, how committed are you with your um, with between your pairing or this pairing agreement with each other as a partnership and the commitment of the mentor themselves on their corporate commitment to really providing grit of assistance that those capabilities that really are going to make the difference and put them over the edge um, in a competitive situation of course the management plan how that uh, pairing agreement will be managed Past and present performance is always important in any type of proposal evaluation, and then, of course, cost. So lastly, um, just to talk a little bit about things that you should be thinking about as you develop your mentor-protege agreement. Um, successful agreements are, are based on trust. Um, the mentor must have faith in the protege's abilities and the protege must have faith that the mentor is truly looking out for their best interest. Um, both of their leaderships from the top down need to be invested in each other. Um, this is not a casual relationship. We sometimes jokingly um, equate this almost as if like the dating, you know, you date for a while and then you decide to get married and you, you hold hands and off into the sunset you go. Um, so this is um, this is we're beyond the dating stage, and uh, you have a mentor protege relationship that um, that you think could bring real value to the protege. Um, both the mentor and the protege understand the value of that, and they understand the long term horizon, how um, that developmental that relationship and engaging in those developmental opportunities. Um, really provides um, a significant upward trend for that protege to have upward mobility as a as a solid member of the defense industrial base. Um, and how do you do that? You do that by um, first understanding the gaps. Um, the protege needs to understand and be able to um, articulate or the mentor with the mentor where their gaps are. What is holding them back? So really, in a nutshell, um, identifying gaps into what is really holding you back, holding a protege company back um, in becoming what, um, a, a member of the defense industrial base, 
the protege having the capability, the knowledge, and the wherewithal to be able to provide assistance and coaching and mentorship to fill those gaps. And that's basically what the agreement, the agreement is. It's how you are addressing that gap analysis. Um, also, um, you, there needs to be some thought into why are we doing this? Is there truly a, um, a business uh, opportunity in, uh, in the type of technology, the, the, the type of capability that's being pursued, um, does that have a, is there a market for it within the DOD community? Um, should the mentor, um, can, you know, the mentor could consider the protege for more subcontracting opportunities if they were over, able to overcome certain barriers, um, then that mentor may be able to um, provide um, another revenue source or more revenue source to that protege through uh, additional subcontracting opportunities. Um, and then looking at just not just beyond DOD, what other federal markets are there? Are there state markets? Um, and all of this is tracked on a long-term basis through um, quarter and annual um, reporting and tracking that um, once a mentor-protege pairing has been submitted, evaluated and approved for award. Um, there is some reporting requirements that um, the two will have to engage in as they progress on this journey together. So um, with that, I want to thank you um, very much for your attention. Um, a lot of information. I um, am quickly, uh, like, look, I often jokingly drink drinking from the fire hose, so to speak. Um, I am here to provide assistance to you to help you navigate that, answer any questions that you may have. Um, we have resources available to us that are also um, very helpful to help you make a go, no-go decision early on if this is something you may be interested in. Um, but the first step is to making you aware that the program is available and hopefully of assistance to you and we're happy to uh, have had the opportunity to, to share that information with you today. So thank you, um, great, uh, great having this time with you and I hope to hear from you soon. Have a great day, bye. Thank you for joining Liftoff Webinars where we propel American manufacturing into the future. Stay tuned for more informative webinars that have the power to shape tomorrow's manufacturing landscape. Discover more about Lyft, our groundbreaking projects, and membership opportunities at lyft.technology. Well, um, excellent job. Thank you um, for a wonderful presentation. It is a lot of information. Um, are you ready to take some questions? I'm ready if you can hear me. It's a small miracle think, if you um, can. Waiting to get Beth up for some questions. Because um, there's a couple that came in. I will just um, provide a, a couple of comments here. Um, the, the detail that you provided, the, the requirements, the um, eligibility, um, the resources that are out there and available for those that are looking um, to become a protege um, was super valuable. I'd like to remind the folks um, that this presentation will be shared after this um, um, this webinar, so you'll receive the uh, recording as well as the presentation. Um, I am going to change screens here to um, put up a QR code that you will be able to um, uh, scan and provide a little bit of information if you want a member um, uh, of the LIFT team, Beth, um, to, to, re, um, to respond to you. So again, I think it's really important to focus on uh, and understand what you shared is um, the critical capabilities and the needs of the um, defense industrial base um, was really important. So Beth, do we have you to take questions? Can you? Um, I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't hear Beth, so um, I might wrap this up because- Can you I hear me? Do not hear Beth, 
And um, as a reminder, I want to thank you for joining uh, the Liftoff webinar. Hello. And um, we... I'm just going to try one more time. Beth, do I have you? Hello. For questions? Can you hear me? Okay. So I think the team can hear Beth. I'm going to give the questions and let her respond because I think I might be having the audio <laughs> problem here today. So Beth, the first question that came in, um, is there a time limit or term for the period of performance in which a mentor protege agreement must be completed? Uh, yeah, hi guys, one more time. If somebody could give me the heads up, if you can hear me. I did get some response previously. Hello. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you, Addie. Um, yes, period of performance. So these contracts are written um, on a base year with two option years. So the potential for a mentor protege agreement can be up to three years, which is a pretty significant commitment um, for that period of time. So you're looking at a, at a base and two options. When you submit your proposal, you write the proposal for the entire um, entirety of what you believe the contract award will require, whether that's just the one base year, one base year, one option year, one base year, and two option years. Over. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. So thank you for that answer. Um, is there a cost limitation on the mentor services that can be provided to a pre protege? I think that's a great question. So I'll let you take it away, Beth. Yeah, there is. Um, actually, there is a limitation, but it's it's pretty liberal. So um, it is up to potentially, a, so just to backtrack a little bit too, when a mentor protege agreement gets awarded, it gets awarded to the mentor company. The mentor then can subcontract some of those services out to those authorized subcontractors I mentioned earlier, um, or they can provide their own time and effort in providing consulting, training, whatever that may be. The cost of that, uh, those services that are provided to the product protege can be up to a million dollars a year. So if you're looking at a three year, one option and or one base year, two option years, that's up to a dollar award, which is pretty substantial. If the uh, uh, if the one year commitment is over 600 K. Then you have to have a justification for that. We're looking into, you know, that's that's some pretty intensive programming to provide coaching and assistance. Um, they'll have to take a deeper dive in looking at what the requirements are of that assistance that you'll be providing and, and why, why, the, um, why, why the expense. So it could be potentially up to a million dollars. Um, if it's over 600K, there will be um, a justification required, um, a little bit more scrutiny involved in evaluating the services that are going to be provided to the protege. Over. Thank you, Beth. Um, so can you talk about um, any successfully completed mentor protege agreements? Um, and I do have another question coming in after that. So I'll let you take this one away and then we'll get to the other one. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, um, you know, there, so I have asked this question. I have talked to a few uh, different mentor protege um, participants, program participants, and uh, I, I can tell you that um, there have been hundreds of mentor protege agreements that have been issued, and they are so diverse and across the board that it's it's pretty amazing. Um, it, it they range from um, even like gene therapy. Um, in the in the biotechnology industry to uh, really basic um, manufacturing, basic manufacturing firms partnering with Raytheon to develop 
um, a certain uh, type of manufacturing process that Raytheon may, be re or it may require. Um, CACI, CACI um, has um, been a mentor in good standing. IBM is a mentor in good standing. So it's really difficult to pinpoint because it's so diverse. It, it really depends on what the business capability of the protege is, and it's all over the map. But there have been very successful pairings, and these proteges are tracked for a long period of time to determine what other contract award opportunities may they have may, may might they have engaged in as a result of the mentor protege agreement um, that they pursued with that mentor company. Over. I hope I'm addressing these questions adequately. But go ahead, Christine. Thanks, Beth. Um, there's a question that came in and says, is there a list of mentors for the Navy sector? I don't know if we can, if there's a specific answer, but I'll let you respond to that one. Well, yeah, there, so there is a, there is an approved mentor list. Um, it is across all of Department of Defense. Interestingly, though, um, the Navy does post those. Um, and those are available if, if there is someone on the call that uh, that would like to have that list. It, I'm going to say off the top of my head, there's about 50 mentors that are currently approved. Once a mentor is approved to be a mentor, um, again, one of the criteria, as I mentioned earlier, has to uh, you have to have uh, uh, received $25 million in contract awards within the previous fiscal year. Um, there, so there is an eligibility. Uh, step process that you have to go through um, as a mentor and once you are eligible as a mentor that approval is good for five years and again there's about 40 or 50 that are out there and they can be found on the Navy's mentor protege website I'm not sure how uh, up to date that is but if there is someone on the call that would like me to follow up with them I'd be happy to provide that list Thank you, Beth. Um, we'll make sure that we get um, in contact with that um, particular person that did ask that question. I will say that um, that is going to wrap up the question and answer part of this um, program today. Um, the Q&R code that I was not able to share is actually in the handout um, part of it. So if it, um, and will be shared after this webinar. Um, but we would like to collect your data. We would like to be a resource um, and um, assist you through this um, really great, important opportunity. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, Beth, appreciate um, you, you and your expertise in your presentation. Um, everybody uh, have a wonderful yeah. day. Thank Christine, you for joining uh, Liftoff I, webinar and we look forward Christine, to the next one. Thank you. Christine, before I call it quits, can I uh, also remind everyone um, on the call, if there is um, anyone out there that is interested in the Mentor Protege program, you're interested in working with a specific mentor, the DOD Mentor Protege Summit will be taking in place in Detroit next week. This is a huge opportunity for local firms to the Michigan area. This is a national conference. Last year it was in Orlando. Uh, I believe they're looking at potentially New Orleans next year. So for companies that are um, locally headquartered in the Detroit or Michigan area, they will accept registration on site. I will be meeting with many of the eligible mentor companies uh, to talk about um, the MIIs as an authorized subcontractor. And it sure would be great to know that if we have a small business in our ecosystem that is looking to partner with one of those mentor companies, to have the heads up about that would be great. So I uh, just wanted to impart that. Um, you can find it on the internet. Just Google DOD Mentor Protege Summit, and it'll come right up in Detroit next Monday. Over. Thanks for sharing that, Beth. I'm, I'm glad that you were able to um, make folks aware of that. And we also will share that out as well because it is a great opportunity for everybody. Again, thank you for joining us for today's uh, Liftoff webinar. Have a great day and a great week. Thank you.